So we're going to talk about continuous load testing, and we're going to use actions. Who knows about load testing? OK. So I might need some correction from some of you guys that know this stuff deep, but we'll see what we can do. My name's Chris Ayers. I'm a senior engineer at Microsoft. I'm part of the Azure Engineering Org. So C plus AI is what we call it. And uh, there's a CXP team there, customer experience. And I'm part of that on the fast track for Azure team. So I help customers build and deploy stuff to Azure. I do a lot of DevOps, I do security, I do all sorts of stuff. You can follow me on the socials, you can follow my blog, you can go out to my GitHub. It's all, all this stuff's out here. So we're going to talk about what's load testing. So y'all that are experts might be able to help me if I get something wrong. We're also going to talk about JMeter because Java, JMeter, yay. Um, a little bit of infrastructure as code discussion. Some benefits of load testing, and we're gonna we're gonna show you all about this stuff. So load testing, we just did F five really fast, right? That's how we generate, right? Like th th this is how people load test, right? Or maybe they run a pester test and they just like for each curl, like like for one to a thousand curl, w get like invoke web request, go go go. Um, it's evaluating your app like your system, your network load performance. You, you're, you're gonna throw traffic at it and try to see where the bottlenecks are, where things break. Um, we're, we're gonna simulate traffic usually. So that means we're gonna have agents or some server that's going to generate these requests that's probably gonna follow a script or it can just like invoke the same thing. But, you know, it's not just hit it with a thousand users go. There's actually different types of load tests that, that people leverage. So you might do, you're, you're, you're under the SLO or the SLA that you're shooting for, under the load level you estimate. Like you say, hey, I need 1,000 users. Let's start at 200, and then let's go up to like 1,500 and see what happens, and then bring it back down and see how long it takes to recover, see what breaks. Maybe you do a soak test and you just generate a thousand and see how it handles max capacity like it's supposed to be able to and what breaks. Maybe you just start at 10 and you go up until it falls apart and you figure out why it fell apart. Or maybe you just have some, some traffic and then you go, oh my God, it's Black Friday. And you're like, okay, we're fine. And you see what happens. Um, so there's different there's different patterns to load testing. And each of these will tell you or teach you something different if you're doing it right. Um, you know, I, I used to work for, uh, as a consultant, I would help the company with an e-commerce site. You know, they were, they were a restaurant chain and their biggest days were like Mother's Day and Valentine's Day. Like they would take online ordering, they would take reservations. And so that was a very big part of their business. And yeah, we were load testing the system like crazy um, to make sure that we could handle all that traffic. And as you start tr you know, having a failure, you make adjustments. Well, then the failure's over here. You make adjustments. And as back over here, you make adjustments. So like the problem will continually move around. Like if you open the floodgates in the front because it was really tiny, you make it bigger. Well, now there's a lot of traffic going to the back end and then that can't handle it. So you make it bigger. And so it's a process. So some of the terms that you're gonna run into a lot when you're load testing are like virtual users. These are the, you know, how many connections are the things that we're gonna be actually simulating. I wanna simulate a thousand users. Okay, I need a thousand virtual users. A lot of times we'll look at ramp up time. They don't all hit at once. Some people get there early, some people get there late. So usually you'll have some sort of uh, maybe a stair step increase, you'll have some sort of vertical increase. The response time, how long it takes, I send a request, I get a response back. That usually doesn't include um, like rendering time, like you don't always see rendering time, like hey, I have complex JavaScript and my browser takes a while, like you, this is really like bytes. Sometimes you'll actually see like time the first byte, that, that, that's, that's a, a term you might see sometimes. 
Um, latency, that's another one. And then you know, we'll look at requests per second. So this is how many requests we're gonna be sending per second throughout the test. And there is some basic algebra you can use to calculate some of this. Number of requests divided by total time, request per second times latency, and you can figure out if you know like some of these things that you have to meet, you can calculate you know, how many virtual users you wanna deal with or how many requests per second you're trying to deal with. So just hitting F5 doesn't work. <laughs> and, and I have seen people just write a script and just um, try to wget or curl or invoke web requests over and over again. The standard for a long time has been JMeter. Now there are other ones out there, Artillery and K6 are, 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 are modern and popular. This one, a lot of people know about, a lot of people, who's used JMeter before? I'm sorry, seriously. <laughs> um, but it's open source, it, it's from the Apache project, it's Java based, they say it's supported on all systems. If you can say Java supported. Um, it, it, is, it is a popular tool. Now here's where things get interesting. It supports a lot of stuff. Like you can do HTTP, HTTPS, you can do SOAP calls, database calls, pretty much any protocol you can probably get supported in JMeter. Um, there are some other ones like you can do like custom plugins and stuff. Um, there's an IDE to build and test these while you're in, you know, getting your test ready. There's a CLI that can be evoked for uh, CICD stuff, and there's some reporting that you can look at. Now, it does not, it's not a browser, so like it doesn't do the, the rendering. You're not gonna get stats on that. Um, so those response times can be a little bit off. Don't use this for like pixel perfect rendering stuff. <laughs> Like that, that's not what this is for. A lot of times people are gonna, you know, use the GUI to develop their JMeter script. And I'll, I'll, show, I'll show you JMeter. And then they'll run it in JMeter to kind of like validate that it works. And then they'll check it in and then maybe run it in the pipeline and validate it there. You know, there is, there is even an option to record stuff. Like you can set up a JMeter proxy and send your browser at it so you can have it automatically record some of your interactions to make things a little easier, but it's generated code, so those are not always the most pretty. <laughs> um, and so in a typical JMeter setup, that what you might try to do is write your, your, write your JMeter script, send it to some sort of controller, some sort of VM, and that's gonna distribute it out to all these nodes and then bombard your, your target server. So a lot of times what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to have uh, infrastructure as code to set up your controller and to set up your nodes and you might wanna create them on the fly and then have scripts to send the commands and load the stuff. And that can be really annoying. It also can be painful if you're in a private network scenario. It can be painful if, uh, like it can, be, it can add up to be pretty expensive. So when we're doing that sort of stuff, it can be time consuming because we have to reconfigure the nodes and, and get those out there. With our pipelines, we can do it every time. We, we can kind of be a little bit more consistent, a little bit more scalable, and the solution I'm gonna talk about today is one that I have leveraged. It's called Azure Load Testing Service. So it integrates in with JMeter. It also has some other ways where you can just plug in individual sites. Um, it works with private endpoints, it works with other things, it has reporting capabilities, and we're gonna show how to do it in the pipelines. Um, now you can leverage some of this to do other JMeter stuff, but this is, we're, we're gonna play around with Azure Load Testing Server in our pipelines. So just like I said, you had to have a controller and all those nodes, the load testing service does that for you. Like you can either just give it a URL and it'll start load testing it, if, and you can say how many users and how much you wanna do, or you can take a JMeter script and plug it in and it will leverage that. You can populate the variables and you can, it's really powerful. Uh, it can hit pretty much any of the stuff in Azure. You can put it inside your private network so you can test stuff that's not publicly accessible. And then you can monitor everything. It'll actually correlate the JMeter test 
with the Azure Monitor stuff. So I can look at the load on the underlying pieces, like the SQL server or the VMs or the, the AKS. So this is where it gets crazy powerful. So, oh, sorry, my voice is a little shot today. So I'm gonna bring it up, but um, I'll show you how we can do a JMeter test and how we can do a quick test and then how we can monitor stuff. And then we'll dive into how to build all this out with infrastructure as code. So let me go to this guy. So this is our load testing service. And right away we can do a quick test and I can just plug in a URL. But that's not in our pipelines. But I mean, I can just say, you know, go test google.com or bing.com or something. And I can say how many virtual users I want and how long I want my test to run. And then that ramp up number we talked about, how long it takes to go from like zero users up to the max amount I want. So I can say ramp up real quick in like five seconds or ramp up over five minutes. And this will behind the scenes generate a JMeter file. I also can say create uh, with a JMeter file and like give it my plan, which is that JMeter. It'll parse it and let me pass in parameters, environment variables, secrets, so I can integrate with Key Vault and do all that fun stuff. I can also define like how many test nodes I want. So this will control those, those node images and, and like it'll automatically scale it out drop in my JMeter file, run it on all of those. So this is gonna act as my um, controller, you know, public, private stuff. I can also define, you know, how do I want this to run? Hey, I don't want my response time maximum to exceed, you know, three seconds or something. So I can do all that. And then I can integrate the monitoring with my other Azure resources so I can see them all together. So let's see how this looks on a test. I've already got set up. So I can go in here into tests, and I can just run this guy. And we'll see one running. So it's automatically provisioning all my nodes for me. So this is what it's like using the GUI, and then we're going to step back, and we're going to do it all in infrastructure as code, and we're going to plug it into the pipeline. So this is just getting you guys familiar with what we're about to do in automation. So it's starting to execute. And so there's the idea of these app components. Um, I, I've already, uh, like, let me just manually add some of these guys in here so we can see what that looks like. Apply. I want all these guys to be monitored while I'm doing my load test. And so what I'll see is charts from JMeter showing up along with all the charts from the individual resources. So here we go. So it's undetermined our, our response rate. We can see our virtual users. We've got a couple right now. We can see successful response times, how they're going, you know, response per second. So I've got real-time metrics on the test as it's running. If I keep scrolling down, I can see the Azure resource metrics correlating to those same um, resources, so like CPU usage or memory or requests. And so I can start getting an insight into what component might be failing or might be the problem as I squish the bugs and they hop around, I can see the results in real time during my test. So this is pretty cool. Yep, we can see our users are growing. That stair-step pattern. Yeah, and right now they're just all getting errors for something I, I probably deleted and started over. But um, as far as the service goes, that, that works pretty easily, pretty well. Um, you know, and I've got smart detection rules, all the Azure Monitor stuff. Um, let me just make sure this guy's running. That might be the problem. We'll find out. I deleted it. That's why one of those things is failing. This is just a uh, 
a little app one of my friends made for rating costumes and stuff. So we got a load testing service. You know, if I want to create one, I can actually just go create and I can say load test. This is out here in the marketplace, but I don't want to do that. You know, I don't want to build this here. So let's look at what it would look like with infrastructure as code. So I can, you know, define an infrastructure as code very easily in like bicep or arm, just saying, hey, I want a load test service, load test. Um, I need a location, I can give it an identity, like a system assigned one in Azure or even a user assigned one, and a description. So there isn't a lot that I need to define the load test resource itself, other than like the resource group I'm deploying it to. But what we want to do is actually leverage some GitHub actions. So there are actions in the marketplace to let us interact with these load testing services once we've created them. You know, if I build and deploy out my, you know, Azure login, I create my resource group and I deploy out my web app, cool. When I want to load test, yeah, here's my load test. I can um, say, hey, here's the name of the thing I'm going to create. That's just the normal, I'm deploying an Azure resource. That's just a normal ARM bicep deploy. This is the task that they provide us to work with it. So let's, let's actually just go look on the marketplace, the GitHub marketplace. Uh, there is also a similar one uh, for Azure DevOps. So we can do either one if you, if you really want to, but if we go look at Azure load testing, this is the action. You can see they're on version 1114. They even have some guidance on how to do the login, like, hey, you need to log in and give, you know, give it permission. But here's our action. And we, we can use the load test file. So if we want to have that, that JMeter script, we can do it. We have a, the resource group, um, the name of the resource, the name of our load test, and some other little values. It kind of looks like this. Now I didn't touch on, I have, I've got JMeter up, we're actually gonna look at a JMeter file to see how some of these align, but you know, if you wanna pass secrets or environments, we can write in the action or write in um, Azure DevOps, so we can have it in an app config or a key vault or in the, the resources, and we can pass these into JMeter. So let, let's actually look at what that looks like. So this is JMeter, it, it's, Glorious, I'm sure. And I will just open up a load test file. And, and I, will, I will magnify my screen. I know this is hard to read. There we go. So we've got this thing called user-defined variables. And we have a couple of thread groups. Like out of the box, um, JMeter doesn't support some of these like ultimate thread groups and stuff. I uh, highly recommend with JMeter installing this JMeter plugin utility, um, JMeter plugin manager. So you can install that. And if you open a JMeter file or if you want to generate a JMeter file that has um, any sort of plugins, this will automatically detect that and, and try to install them. But let us go. Where is it? There we go. So this is saying I want 10 virtual users or 10 threads, and I want it to happen over 180 seconds. So we can see, you know, expected users count as 10, and we can see it kind of adding one every couple of seconds to about 180 seconds, and then we want it to hold the load for 240 seconds, so we can see it's holding that load, and then it shuts down over five seconds, and so this, drops back off. We can tweak these values, you know, if we want our startup time to be, you know, 18 or eight seconds, boom, like it. So this is how we can do those different types of tests of uh, just having the stair step up, having the load spike, having a soak. We can control all of that here, um, adjusting the values as we see fit. And if we come back up here, sorry, the zoom is messing with me a little bit. We can see I'm calling this thing called get all costumes. So I'm, that's the name of the request. So I've given the individual request a name. I've got 
the protocol I'm using, which is a HTTP uh, S request, and then I'm using a variable for my API. Like I don't know where the API is that's going to host this this particular uh, service, so I'm using the variable and I'm just saying, hey, I want to hit slash costumes, or in the the, the case of this one, hey, I want to get a costume by name. So that takes us back to this, the user defined variable. We've got this one called API URL. And this is going to pull the value from the environment of API URL. So I can pass in when I invoke JMeter some value to API URL and it will get populated into my load test and it will use that as the basis for all my URL requests. So I, I've parameterized this particular load test. So that takes us back to what does it look like in GitHub? So um, this is the wrong file. I really need to be in this one. There we go. So I want to pass it that API URL. That's the same value that's in our load test file and I'm using the output of a deployment. So I'm dynamically deploying out my app, I'm getting the URL of the app, and I can dynamically pass it to my parameterized JMeter. So I can start tying the pieces together. Um, and we can run a couple of these a couple of times, or we can play around with it and see what it looks like. So let's go out there real quick. There we go. So I ran a deployment a little bit ago. This is it. And it marked it as failed. And I can look and see, hey, I deployed my infrastructure as code, which is going to be like my, my API, my, my Cosmos DB, my um, all, all of the po components. So, and it built and deployed my back end. So it built .NET, it logged in, it created a function. All that worked. And then it ran a load test. And it says it failed. So I can, I can come up here and I can look, and I have some criteria. I had one pass and one fail. So let me, I got an actual value of get all costumes, average response time in milliseconds greater than 1,000. It will fail. And I got an actual value of 3,283. And then an error rate greater than 20, I had 0.04. So I didn't have any failures, but my response times were terrible. So if I go and look in my application and try to figure out why did this thing you know, blow up, why, why is it all messed up, I can see that one of my friends who was trying to be silly, he put a thread sleep in there. Because of course he did. You know, super unperformant code. Well, now that I know that it's there, I can come and check that in. And push that up. We can have the pipeline invoke that load test again and see if we can get a passing grade. And then if it passes the load test, we could then add another stage to deploy it out to like QA or production. So we can interact with these things pretty easily. Um, let's find the one. Yep, so. And I, I set up some, some dependencies, so it's gonna deploy my infrastructure as code. It's checking out everything. We're doing our AZ login. We're gonna make sure our resource group exists. You know, infrastructure as code is item potent. Like we, we, we can say create it if it already exists, cool. We can deploy out our infrastructure if it already is there, cool. Um, I, I could destroy it when I was done if I wanted to do that. Like I can create and destroy these things pretty easily once you start building out the infrastructure as code. Pretty much all my projects nowadays have like I start with Bicep or Arm or Terraform or something, and like I want a web app. I don't go out to the portal. I make it an infrastructure as code so I can do it repeatable. 
Yep, still running. And for those paying attention, it's PowerShell. Sorry, just had to. Yep. So I actually, yeah, that, thank you. That's a great point. So I have for this particular project, I have my JMeter test, like my API, my infrastructure, my web app, and my test all live here. The JMeter file says a JMX, which is an XML format of, of ugliness. Um, now, now, for those that like to play at home, you probably could go out to ChatGPT and ask it to generate a JMeter test for you, and it, it probably would make something. I don't know. Um, there is another, uh, and, and I didn't highlight it earlier, there is the, the config for the YAML um, for the service, and this is where we conversion our test give it a name so that CICD load test is the name it's going to show up in our load test service we're just saying hey use that JMX file that that's right next to it you know here's our description um, we can actually control the scale like hard-coded here like I and we could make that a variable if we wanted to, to like transform and then we have failure criteria where we're like defining the rules that we need to pass it's like hey it's not personal mr. developer friend that wrote some crappy code like this needs an average response time and we need an average error rate of, you know, if, if either of those conditions happen, you're failing. Like this is our, this is what we agreed upon when we started building the application. Let's see where this guy is. There we go. So, okay. So it built the infrastructure and now it's just building and deploying back the, the, the back end, you know, some .NET code, some node code. Those are all being built and deployed. So just give it a sec to get to the load test stage, and then we'll go look at the load test, get kicked off, and start running dynamically. These usually don't take too long. This just takes a couple seconds. But um, any questions while we're waiting on this? Okay. Lively bunch. Come on, guys. Um, there was... Uh, a, where was it? Well, I mean, if you, you are always worried about spinning up VMs and stuff to run um, JMeter, that can add up real expensive real quick. This one, I know it's in preview right now. Um, where's the pricing on it? I think it's just under the pricing calculator. I mean, it's a valid question. And it's $10 per resource. And then you get like a total number of virtual users. You get 50 virtual user hours a month for that $10 service. So if I run 500 user test for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, one time a month, it's like 10 bucks. Yeah. All right, uh, where was I? Just waiting on the service to finish. The front end got deployed. Back end should finish up in a second. But yeah, the, uh, the task that we were looking at for this, you know, we've got our YAML file. That's what gets passed out to that um, That's what we're passing. We're, we're passing um, that load test config file. So that, that for me is a value. I've got you know, project tests, load test YAML. So I'm, I'm passing that to the load test when I invoke it. So it's going to pull in that JMX file and knows the resource group and knows the name of the load test service. And then it takes the value and it knows the name of the, the URLs. Yeah. Earlier you were mentioning about making this like a required step. 
Mm -hmm. okay. Yep, so that's exactly what we're, we're doing here. Like we are making, um, for maybe a dev environment or even a load test environment, we can say create a load test environment, deploy out the application code that's running, and then we're gonna automatically run the load test as part of it. You can then add additional steps beyond that to say, now it can go to QA, or now it can go to the real dev, and this could be required for PR, or required to merge. So I guess the question I had was, so the, the, the condition for failure is just basically that's it, you can't just say, hey, you know what? Nope. It's required, but maybe you, your time took a little too long to... Nope, like th this is the criteria. Like if you hit this, it will fail. Now there are some options in the load test service. Um, you know, when we go back to it, wherever I was, yep. Like there, there are some different criteria that you can deal with, you know, and, and um, you know, if I create a test, This is the testing criteria. So we can have different metrics and we can mix and match whatever we want. Response time, request a second, the number of requests, latency or error rate. So, and then we can do, you know, a percentage of errors, um, a minimum, maximum, 99th percentile. So these are a lot of the metrics that people use when they define the performance characteristics of their application. Um, yeah, greater than, less than, some threshold. And so you have a lot of capabilities on this uh, to kind of fine grain what you're looking for. Yeah, yeah. Yep, so here we go. Our load test service is doing the login. So it's already logged in. So it's about to invoke the load test. And if I go look at that service, because I was waiting on it, we'll see that this is now executing. This has gotten kicked off and you can see the description started with GitHub Actions. So we can see that it was automatically kicked off as part of this. And now it's gonna start executing. And so now we'll see if that, that comment I, I, I placed taking out that delay is going to adjust dramatically the response times on some of those calls and, and let it pass. But this is a, a relatively easy way to add some of these capabilities into your pipelines, like both on the like the Azure DevOps side or the, the GitHub Action side. Um, the, the provided actions are, are real nice. Yeah, we can see the initial one and then it's starting to, to come down for average response times. It's just that first one that threw it off. We got no errors. And yeah, we can look at our response uh, request per second. Those averages will all come down once that first spike passed. And you can see the, the two different tests. I can like drill into one or the other. Um, I've got some filtering here and I can tweak like which percentiles and stuff I wanna look at. You know, you were, you were talking about error rate. Like I just wanna see the errors. If I, if I had more, I could drill in. I could uh, hone in on one specific time frame that was happening. So all, all of these are um, capabilities we can do. Now I've got another demo I can show you guys while this is running, which I think is real interesting because this one, let me run this guy. Like I've, I've run this one through the pipeline. In fact, I, it's, because I made that check, it's running this one too. Um, this application, if we kind of scroll through here and we look, we got good response times, we got good requests, but we, we, we were doing a lot of requests and it fell off. And if we look at what's happening with our storage account or our Cosmos, we started going up and then we maxed out on our, our consumption. So our database plan kind of peaked, like and we used up all of our, our resources. And that actually tanked the results of our, our responses and it tanked our tests. So we can use this, like I was saying, to right size what we're doing and, and make adjustments 
to handle these things and identify which exact component. So in this case, like this one, normalized component, it was for my, da my database. So I can dive down and start looking at um, you know, what, what that issue might be. Yep, so my throughput was only 400 RUs. I probably needed a lot more than that. So I can, I can tweak those and increase the scale. Uh, you know, so we can go into our collection. And realize our scale is just set way too low. We can up it to like 1200. Save that, we can rerun our load test. I'm a big fan of, if you're making a change to your resources, if you're dealing with load tests, make one change, rerun your test. Under, like, don't change two or three things and just dial them up to 11. You're gonna over-provision everything. You're just gonna be paying lots of money. And you might not, like, like you said, you might just move the problem around. You might open up the, the, the hose at the front and then everything breaks in the back. So make one test, one change, run your test, Validate that it looks okay. Make another change. Validate that it looks okay. Like be be thorough and precise. Don't um, be all over the place. Like just hey, no, let's turn off of them. So that, that that's my advice on that. Um, any other questions on this right now? So uh, back to J meter for a second. So I mentioned that you can do. I want to do a template. Where is the option? Yeah. So these are the templates. You can see a SOAP web service, an FTP, an LDAP, and then we want to do a recording. So this is how you can record your browser to do multiple steps. Like, hey, I want to log in. I want to add the thing to my card. I want to try to check out. Um, you, have, uh, you have to set your proxy to point a JMeter, and then this will actually create a certificate. You know, so I'll, uh, yeah, example.com, create. What this will do is this will actually create a certificate for you that you have to install into your browser to work. When you, you come down here to the, the recorder step, and you want to start recording, Sorry, I keep having to zoom in and out. I want to make, yeah. It'll ask some stuff like, do I want to allow access? And then it'll, oh, it, it was there for a second and then it went away. It's like, hey, here's a certificate. Where'd it go? Yeah. Well, it's gone now, but it was there. It said, like, here, we're generating a root certificate for you. We're putting it in our, our JMeter directory, you have to like add this to your browser right now um, in order for it to work or else it'll, it'll just complain the whole time. So um, that's how you do that. Yeah, I think that first one tanked the whole test because of the, the averages. They should have been better, but we'll see. But yeah, that is most of this. Let me see if we've got a few more. Oh yeah, like that's full uh, capability we can do. So like if I wanted to do a low test, it, it's full JMeter, so I can bake in that warm up time, I can bake in all that stuff, but I, I can also just do a quick test. So I can do like, I want thing.com with an HTTPS in front of it, because you got to. I want five virtual user with a ramp up time of 10 seconds. You can see how much it'll consume, run the test, and it'll make a JMeter for you in the background. And like, if you don't need to do any complex logic, if you just, I want to hit F5 a lot, <laughs> you, you can do this to help automate that. And you, it can run inside your private network so that um, if you're trying not to load test a, a public website, you can do this. And I, I don't want to be blocked by wherever. Um, Okay, so there are some other things I wanted to point out. 
So we also have, there also is out there a sample um, out on GitHub for uh, AKS load testing. This will actually show you some steps and, and there's actually a recording out on GitHub that's pretty nice um, about, yeah, we're like, we're working with Brendan Burns on this, but uh, like talking about how to right size your pods in a container space. Like a lot of times people m might give it the wrong CPU limit or, or memory limits or re requests and they start throwing a lot of resources at their, their applications, trying to make sure that they run on everything. This will let you right size your, your stuff, get the right, yeah, and you can see the comparisons that they're doing between the different requests. So this is a really cool kind of repo that you can, you can play around with. Um, it, it's under Azure Samples AKS Load Testing. So the, if you are interested in that, I'd um, definitely grab this. We've got in here all of our load tests. We've got the Azure Voting Service, so you can see how some of these things are, are written. And if we, we actually look at the actions, the other one like you, you can see how they get invoked like yeah we're gonna run it we're gonna do metrics for our load tests we're gonna go metrics for our release like we, we they can go um, look at those individual responses right inside the the pipelines so really cool stuff um, yeah, so this is a great way to play around with it if you want to play around with it some And with that, let me go back to mine. I think I closed my tab, so. Now, um, the reason, and you even brought this up, the reason we might want to do this is we want to catch that problem. You know, just like my friend had some impl implementations, a lot of times we're working on new features. We don't always have the most efficient way of doing it. We're doing a, a lookup, we're depending on this other service. We added retry logic over a thing that already has retry logic, so we've added extra delays potentially to our stuff. We can start catching those right as we implement them. If we've got a good working system, we have divine, defined standards, we can add this in as a, a gate um, to catch it early. Uh, it, again, has a, it makes a deeper conversation between developers, testers, and operators because this is the standard we all agreed to. Like, and now we know it, it, it's baked into the pipeline, it's run every time. It's not a debate, it's not an option. Like we're checking this stuff all the time. Um, and it's a lot easier to spin up and down things. So you, you know, you're not worrying about a lot of that overhead and you're getting all the results real quick. So with that, we got about two minutes left. Any questions or comments or anything anybody wants to share? Um, whoops, I had, uh, and because I did a lot of bicep, I, I put a link to bicep there. But yeah, anything you guys wanna chat about? We had some load testing experts in here. Did I miss anything on like some of the JMeter or load testing terminology? Crickets, lively. You guys are really making me feel loved up here. Yeah. Can you use that as a local test app for specific Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a URL. It's just you get a lot of benefit by having that deeper integration where you can see the individual um, metrics aligned with the um, test run. It, it makes it a lot easier to see what's happening. Um, a lot of times with JMeter, when you distribute out all these results, you have to collate them. Sometimes you have to make your own reports and dashboards. Um, I mean, there are some capabilities there, but like this um, makes it much easier to see all the stuff correlated together. And then if you need to drill down to a certain time range, you know, like, Fourteen, fifteen seconds, or something like that. Yeah. 
you know, you can get that one little snippet of what you're looking for. Anything else? Well, thank you guys. I appreciate you coming out here today.